And one thing Nikki said that I love so much about you and just who you are as a woman, she said you immediately embraced her. <laughs> and you were like, you know, you, I'm proud of you, all those things. You guys did Five Star Chick remix with, mm -hmm. with Yo Gotti and Gucci. Mm -hmm. And you guys had this beautiful sisterhood. And I felt like at that moment with this whole controversy surrounding BAPS and the lack of promotion and then somebody on your ah, team saying was, that, yeah. I could tell you were so exhausted. Did that affect your friendship with Nikki? Um, it could have, I would say. Um, I would say this, though. Um, as soon I when I, I did my album and I'm a, I'm a girl's girl. I want the girls. I had this idea and I wanted it to be my Southern voice. I wanted it to be a different type of voice, and then I wanted it to be a different voice, Three Girls. I created this song, and I put Nicki Minaj and Lady Saw on the song. Love them, okay? This is before Nicki really blew up. She was on my album, and my label, they didn't really, this was like when she was on mix. I think she was just getting signed to Young Money. And, you know, the label didn't know who she was or anything, and I was pushing and fighting to do a video and all this stuff. And so we moved past that. That was done. So now here we go. Fast forward. We're in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm working. Well, 2019 is when the album came out. This is just going back to 2018, kind of in the late of it, because I'd already been working on a project already like a couple of years. But at the closing of it is when I was like narrowing down the features. I was getting everybody on the out on the on the songs. Um, at this time, Nikki was in Miami. And she was like, I'm in Miami, come see me. I was like, okay. I came to the studio to see her. Um, we had another record we was gonna do. And um, we end up, we was talking about this other record, but when I got to the studio to see her in Miami, she played the BAPS record for me. And I just loved it. I was like, oh my God, I love this record, whatever. And um, I was like, okay. This is my, I got to turn my album in. It's got to be done, da, da, da. She was working on her album. And she was like, I'm going to do it right now. I promise I'm going to have it tonight. I was like, no, you're not. You're going to put it to the back. We just going back and forth about it. She's like, no, I promise you. She did it extremely fast. Like I'm talking about that. She did what she said she was going to do that night. Mm. She was working on other records, but she made it her business to do the record and send it back to me. Because we, we was there for hours and we, was, we didn't record that night. Me and her, we were just talking, reminiscing, just talking about uh, just life, just stuff. And... Um, that night, I was like, there's no way she's going to do the record when we leave out of here. She's going to be tired, whatever. But at this point, she was in the studio like for hours all night. So the next day, she sent the record. I just to the record. I instantly booked studio and went and did the record back. I sent it back to her. She went nuts. And so it was playing back and forth with, you know, doing it and, and getting, mm -hmm. getting it finished so it could make the album. Um, once it was done, I was, I was super excited because like, this is the big record for the album. And the label was all pumped and excited. And I was happy that, because we had got a record with somebody else and we both loved the record, but I was just happy that it was something that she was comfortable with and that she loved as much as I like, loved it once I got it from her. So boom, record is done. Um, finishing up the album, doing all that's done. Now my album comes out and I'm in LA and she's doing Queen Radio. So I go to Queen Radio get on the radio, we talk about the album, we go back and forth, we do all this, we have this whole thing. I had a little listening thing in that later, so I was kind of rushing, and I did the whole show, and then I left. Um, album comes out. Um, you know, everybody's excited, everybody's supporting, and this, that, mm -hmm. and so now, maybe, I want to say like two weeks into the album, um, the label was pressing for us to do VAPS as a single. So like, I'm like, but what, how much time do we have? And it was like, no, we gotta do it fast because we wanna, we wanna keep the momentum of the album. It's just coming out, you, all this. So now I'm texting Nikki, like, hey, um, so look, the label wanna make this the next single, um, blah, 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 whatever. So what do we need to do? She explained to me exactly what to do for the song, right? I sent to, at that time, was my manager, all the info, everything needs to be done, everything needs to happen from radio to the whole thing. We didn't even talk about the video. It was just about 
putting a release in the record. So making sure, you know, y'all supporting or whatever. The video is a whole nother bargain. And so she was fine with everything. She told me everything was all about radio. And I, I sent them everything. And um, at this time, I'm on Orchard slash Sony Music. Um, and so I gave it to them. And, you know, the week passed by. We were still doing promos. Some stuff was coming up. We was talking about different records. And so I went back and was like, okay, how far are we with what's need, what needs to be done for this record? Mm -hmm. So it can meet the deadline. We Nikki could be on board. She could support it. And this is all she needs for it to happen. And it seemed like it would, like, to me, they just weren't being honest. That's what it seemed like. Your? My team. Like, my team. manager and the team. Okay. And so... Instantly, I like I kind of like felt the way I felt like in my moment. How could y'all? This is not a time to play. That's what I felt like. In other words, this is not a time to play. I just felt like if you tell me we got to do something, we got an X amount of time, and I say, oh shoot, okay. Now let me reach out to her, and I do that, mm -hmm. and I get back from her exactly what's needed, and I send it to you guys, and you say, okay, we're on it. Yes, everything's good. Okay, and then we're not getting nowhere. Like, kind of like, even, you know, even she said, hey, what's going on? What did it, what, what they said about the record? She's even reaching out to you. She asked me, because I had already put this in the ear. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I think she was, I want to say, I don't know if she was, not switching man. I don't know. I don't want to say she was switching managers. Something was going on with her team, but she made sure I stayed in the loop. And everything that she sent me, I sent to my team. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like at that point, whether it was more money you had to put up for radio or whatever, because at this point, we're still talking about just putting a song out single wise. You're not telling me exactly what it is. Again, we're Orchard and Sony. This is the distribution. So if they say, well, we'll do this, but we'll cover this and you guys got to cover that, you're not saying that to right. me. Right. You're not saying that to me. And I did the deal with my manager, so you're in charge. The label opened the budget up to you, so... Why are we not on the same page? And why are you not as responsive when it comes to what's needed now? Okay, so I felt, I felt the way. And I, a week passed. So I asked, I mean, hello, I asked. Now I'm asking, so what are we doing? Like, I got to tell her something. You got to make a response. You don't want the ball to drop. Like, what are we doing? And I think just his conversation of what I like to call, like, when somebody's fast talking you, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I felt like he was fast talking me and he wasn't, or he was just kind of just telling me what I wanted to hear, but not the truth. Because what I want to hear, I'm not still liking it because you're not coming with receipts of what, what's taking so long. And that's what I really wanted from you. And so we, I kind of fell out with him about that because I just felt like I worked like seriously my butt off for this album. All the features on the album from Miss Kelly Price to Nicki Minaj to 2 Chainz to Lil Wayne to everybody that was on the album. Um, and we got this far and you guys came to me and said, this is the record we put out as a single. So once you said that, it gassed me up. Yeah. So now I'm going to do my calls and reach out and make sure my part is done. So yeah. you don't have to do all the extra work. I'm just going to hit her up myself, you know, and... But I'm going to send you what she's saying so we can get the proper people to handle it. Yeah. And I feel like they didn't do it. They dropped the ball and I just felt the way. And so, um, yeah, when that happened, um, somebody that was working with me on my team um, had, I don't know if they went live or was it Beagle? What was happening at the time? Was it live? It, it was. Well, or? this person said, <laughs> um, I believe he called Nicki Minaj manipulator, manipulative, and... And I'm with you. I don't know if it was a live or a tweet. I don't know if it was a live or was it on or was social media or Twitter. I don't know. Yeah. Remember so ideally what it was. Yeah. But I just remember it. Everybody just like hitting me up, ring me up. And when I saw it, I was like, like, what the hell are you doing? 
Like, and his response was like, you know, I'm just feeling mad because we did all this work and we got this song and she's not helping out and she's not. And I was like, you're wrong. It don't work like that. You're on this side, but you're not on the business side. Mm -hmm. You just on partially creative side, but you're not cutting no checks. Okay. So therefore, I, I felt like this is my team. Everybody that was working for me on this side was blindsided like me. I felt like you, he acted out of emotion, but you don't act out of emotion on live against a celebrity that's somebody that I know that I have a relationship with, a friendship right, with. Right, you're a friend. You was wrong. Yeah. So I'm going to put you in your place first, but I'm going to deal with my manager because now I'm really alarmed like something's not going right. Like I'm feeling like I'm just like feeling betrayed, like the job. What are you doing? Like, are you stealing from me? Like, what's happening? Because why aren't you responding and this making this happen? Like, at least come to me and say, okay, well, they want this much for this or that, and we can't do it. But you didn't give me no info. You just kept saying you handled it, you handled it. After a while, it started feeling like you playing with me, and I'm extra mad. But in the midst of all of this that's going on, mind you, this is in the prime time of when I'm losing my mom. Mm. My album has come out in June. My mom passed away in September. So I was like, I couldn't even really focus, but we couldn't back on there. We, we, it was go time. We had to go. And so in the middle of this now, I know what's going on, but I'm not even, I'm so, I think I'm hurt with how I'm feeling towards my manager at the time. I'm not even, I'm not even addressing the rest of my team. I'm not even talking like, I don't even have nothing to say to y'all, but I saw, you know what, now I got to lively, like, say this person that works for me has no place to do what he did or speak on my behalf. I don't need nobody to speak for me. Um, what the fans think, they don't even know or say what you are saying on my team, you don't even know what you're talking about. And nobody knows that Everything that I needed done from the song, as far as radio to move forward, came directly from Nikki. Like, they don't know that. Mm -hmm. Like, y'all thinking, y'all, the team is thinking it's the label with the games. You don't, I gave all the information. So everybody just shut up. Like, seriously, like, it, it just, you know, it wasn't just the time for that. And it was like right after that, boom, after that happened, after I said what I said on live and got off, that wasn't a like in our relationship, we were still like talking. We were still talking. Y'all were still communicating yes, after the live. Yes, but she okay. knew I was hurt and upset about it. But at the end of the day, that's not her fault. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. she was really trying to help. But again, like I took the blame for it. Even though it's my team, my management, these are people that I work for. I don't like to play the blame game. It's my project. It's my job. Yeah. It's my thing. If it, if it, if it took a hit, I'm going to stand up for that. Because I worked hard for I put it together. Y'all are just the people that's in position. And you let me down. Dealing with that situation with the manager. And I come to find out, yeah, you got a whole bunch of money under deal for me. We didn't know about it. So we all blindsided. You left me hanging. It's still my name, mm -hmm. my brand. I'm going to stand up for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that loss, um... It just, it changed my mind mentally of who I deal with, like working with people, trusting. This is a person I worked with my entire career since I started. So I trusted you. Like I trusted you and you didn't, you did me wrong, you know? You had to let them go? I had let go. I, I didn't, I couldn't even be around you. I was hurt. I was humiliated. I was, I felt betrayed. I felt used. I felt lied to, like. I felt like you saw me struggling and working hard to finish my project. You, I brought you in. My project was almost done. I just brought you in because you've been in this industry for so long and I work with you my whole career and I know you know how to go in and do the talk. Like the stuff that I don't have need to do, I know you know how to do it. At least I, I trusted you to do it because I've been working with you since I started. But it's always been a big team. Now it was just us. And I put all my trust in you and you failed me. So... It's not the end of the world. It, it hurt. It bothered me. I still feel like I had an amazing album. I still am completely grateful for every person that got on my album, every feature. Even after that, even once June came, the album went away. It was going down. My mom passed. Nikki was one of the first people to reach out to me. 
Like genuinely, you know, I, I wasn't even thinking about that at the, no more. Like the, out, none of that. Yeah. Like I was so, like I was really tapped out. But I'm still having to be here present to deal with everything that's happening.